So Williamtown Military Restricted Airspace is some of the most dynamic airspace in Australia and that's primarily because we've got uh, military fast jets operating in and out of Williamtown. Our terminal airspace is uh, essentially 25 miles around Williamtown but in that we have to sequence formations of military jets, RPT aircraft, GA aircraft, helicopters and of course civil aircraft transiting the zone. So it's not a problem to transit, it's just there's a few uh, procedures that we need people to be aware of and to follow. You're free to flight plan through it and uh, expect that clearance as you as you approach Williamtown. There's three ways predominantly to get through the airspace. The first way, and it's the most scenic and it's the most common, is the VFR coastal route. It uh, tracks from Nobbies up the coast at 500 feet to Anabay and then you'll be issued with a clearance not above 2,000 from Anabay to Broughton Island. That route is preferred just because it's, so, it's, it's a pretty flight. However, there are another two routes. There's the inland lane which goes from Maitland, it follows a railway line up to Gloucester and it's all marked out on the VTC. The third way is the overhead route, which is uh, over top of Williamtown up to Broughton Island. Nobby's head, if you look on the VTC, is actually inside military restricted airspace. So if you hold at Nobby's without a clearance, you'll be violating controlled airspace. So what we suggest is hold to the southwest of Nobby's. That will mean that you're outside of restricted airspace until you get that clearance just be aware of uh, any other airspace users such as hang gliders that could be in the area. Coming out of the inland lane, you have to be very cognizant of the fact that the inland lane goes all the way to Maitland. Don't cut the corner to get into Maitland or don't cut the corner getting into the lane. We need people to be established on the railway line, OCTA, and then follow that railway line all the way up the lane. Williamtown military restricted areas are active from 6 a.m. in the morning all the way through till 10 at night. There's a few things that we need people to do to make everyone's job easier. First thing is call up about 10 miles prior to us. Contact clearance delivery. The frequency is 130.35. Charlie Yankee Foxtrot uh, just request uh, a coastal northbound. There's going to be delays and you want to go the coastal route maybe that you'll choose to go the inland route. The inland route's great because it means that you're OCTA, you're in Class G airspace, you don't need to talk to us at all. From Anabay, expect to be re-cleared, not above 2,000. Charlie Yankee Foxtrot's approaching Anabay. Charlie Yankee Foxtrot from Anabay, briefly coast to north down, not above 2,000, or again, out Broughton Island. And that'll take you all the way up to Broughton Island. From Broughton Island, make sure you follow the coast all the way to Sugarloaf. From Sugarloaf, you'll be OCTA and you're free to go on your way. Weather can be a consideration if you're flying the inland route because of the uh, high ground and it's not uncommon to have uh, cloud all the way to ground on the inland route. So you need to read your NOTAMs, check the weather. The inland lane from Maitland up the railway line is only at 1,600 feet. The terrain around there is rising and if you've got some strong westerlies, it can get very bumpy. So be aware of that as well. From Gloucester it changes to, to not above 2,000 feet, but still the, the land is rising as well. The inland lane's only been out uh, for the last 12 months, but on the weekend, if you want to travel up to Coffs Harbour or Taree from Sydney, it's the fastest way to get across Williamtown. Overhead route is available. There's no level specified in any of the documentation. That's negotiated between the pilot and approach at the time. So if you want to fly on the overhead route, nominate a level and you can expect uh, that to be cleared if it's available. Generally speaking, military traffic is Monday to Friday. Air traffic are here seven days a week, but on the weekend it's generally RPT and GA traffic. Or if there's going to be delays on the weekend, it's going to be due to RPT traffic and separating you from them arriving and departing from the airfield. So Romeo 596 is a piece of airspace that just lies to the northeast of Williamtown. It's very close. It's only about two and a half miles off the runway used for military operations. That will be notified as active on the ATIS, as salt ash active. So if that is active, don't expect to get the overhead route because the overhead route goes straight through it. Expect to go the coastal route or the inland lane. If you're on the coastal route, you should traffic with aircraft operating in salt ash. It's one of those things, If you, as long as you stay on the coast, preferably over water, you'll be clear of all operations in Romeo 596. VFR aircraft normally require prior permission prior to landing at Williamtown. Williamtown Airport is a military airfield and its purpose is for military aircraft. However, if there's an emergency or if you need a place to land, mention it to air traffic control and we can arrange it. It's not a problem. There's been times when we've offered it to people, 
just because either they've been lost or they're running short on fuel or they're running short of daylight, it's always an option. Just keep that up in the back of your mind. The closest airfields that we have to us is Maitland. It's easy to find, you follow the highway to the south of Williamtown for about 10 miles. About 10 miles to the south of Maitland is Cessnock, that's another airfield. They've both got fuel, they're both easy to find and they've both got friendly people. Whenever you're flying through Williamtown restricted airspace, always have a plan B because the traffic may be that we just can't get get you through the coastal corridor, the overhead route may not be available, so always have a plan B. That plan B may be the inland lane following the railway line. If that's the case, that's great, just make sure the weather's fine for it. Tracking via the coastal route northbound, it's important once you're at Broughton Island to continue tracking coastal northbound until you're at Sugarloaf Point. You've got military restricted airspace either side of you from Broughton Island all the way to Sugarloaf Point. Remain coastal northbound until you get to Sugarloaf Point and then track to uh, your destination. Romeo 583 Bravo is a piece of airspace that lies at 25 miles to the northwest of Williamtown. It's not always active, so you need to check your NOTAMs. If it is active, it'll be active from the surface to 10,000 feet. There's lots of great things to see in the coastal route as you're travelling from uh, Nobby's Head all the way up through Anna Bay and Broughton Island. You may even see a whale, you may see sharks, but if you want to do an orbit, you must seek ATC approval. You can't just conduct an orbit uh, in the coastal route without uh, the correct clearance. That's because air traffic will be sequencing your transit with arrivals into Williamtown.